Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Let me know if you can hear me okay, if you'd like to say hello. Hello, Ben. Hello, Ben. Hello, Caro, Odalis, Wendy. Good afternoon. We'll get started here in just a second. Hello, Odalis. Good afternoon, Lisette. Hello, Ben. Hope you guys are getting ready to finish the semester. Hope, hope the rest of the classes are going well for you. As we finish the semester this week, we're into the last week, just a couple of more days. And uh, in fact, for us, we're finishing this activity that we started late last week into this week. Today, we're going to spend another day working on the paragraph. We'll talk a few minutes, kind of review what we talked about yesterday to help clarify any ideas about developing a paragraph. Tomorrow, the objective here is to try to finish today the paragraph that we started yesterday. And tomorrow, we'll look at reviewing your paragraph, making changes, so that Friday, we'll be ready to read our paragraph during our live session. So Friday, we will be using this live session to read our paragraph that we've been working on this week related to progress. Remember that progress, we want to focus mainly on the positive change that has occurred from the past to the present. So today, what I'd like to do, I'll go ahead and share my screen. And I uh, just want to review quickly the, the main point I wanted to make yesterday in terms of looking at paragraph development and looking at how different sentences can function within the same paragraph. A, an essay can live and die by how well you can or cannot develop a paragraph. So everything that we're talking about today, even though we're only working on one paragraph, is going to also relate to your essay that you're working on currently in writing. And next semester, when you're asked to develop any type of academic essay, try to keep these concepts that we're talking about today in mind. Yesterday, we talked about sentences within a paragraph functioning differently, functioning in different ways. And uh, there is there are a lot of different ways that you can look at it, but I think for me, I think of it in terms of the acronym MEAL, M-E-A-L. Now, today we're going to use the idea of summary, or we're going to use the initial S uh, to indicate the last sentence. We'll, I'll get into that here in a minute. But let's start with the first sentence of your paragraph. So make sure when you're developing your paragraph that you create a, a sentence that includes the main idea of the paragraph, okay? So this is going to be your topic sentence. So one type of sentence in a body paragraph is going to be uh, the main idea. It's going to be the topic sentence. Another type of sentence in your body paragraph is also going to represent evidence, all right? And this is what you worked on a couple of days ago when you were asked to include at least two evidence sentences that indicate one of the question words, how, why, when, where, and so on. So one other type of sentence is the evidence that's gonna provide details, examples, statistics, facts, that all relate back to the, the main idea. A third type of sentence, we can call this an analysis sentence, we can call it an explanation type of sentence, we can think of it as commenting, but basically an analysis sentence links the evidence back to the main idea. All right, so this is going to be oftentimes in your own words, you're commenting on how the evidence, how the examples, the, uh, the details, the facts, the statistics, how all of those details relate back to the, idea, the main idea. This is where you, the writer, can explain and comment on that relationship. Okay, so we don't want to leave it up to the reader just to assume, okay, I just included a statistic, but 
we need to be explicit in how it relates back to the topic sentence. All right, so we have a main idea type of sentence. A sentence can function as an evidence with citations, and a sentence can function as an analysis or an explanatory type of sentence. The fourth type of sentence for the purposes of our activity for this task is going to function as a summarizing sentence or a closing type of sentence. It's going to conclude the paragraph, right, based on the evidence and the analysis, everything that you've mentioned. We need to try to close the sentence or the paragraph with, with a summarizing sentence. Now, in the case of a, an essay, if you're working on an academic essay, let's say a five paragraph essay, and you have three body paragraphs, then you could also have what's called a linking sentence that links the idea of one paragraph to the next idea that's coming later in the next paragraph. And so you could have a sentence that offers a transition between paragraphs. But for us, for this task, since we only have one paragraph, we can look at this last sentence as a summarizing sentence. Think of a body paragraph as a mini essay. It has a beginning, it has a, mi a middle, and it has an end. For us, the beginning is the main idea. The body of the paragraph is going to consist of evidence and analysis type of sentences. And the final sentence, our closing, is going to be our summarizing sentence. That's how we're going to complete or finish the, the body paragraph. So for this activity, I want you to take into consideration all the information, the context that you've been writing about, the measurements, the title, of course, and the evidence sentences that you have here, you can begin inserting those evidences in, or those evidence sentences into your paragraph. Now, yesterday we looked at a couple of examples because there are, you know, some ways of organizing your sentences are better than others. So not only can these sentences function differently, we also have to pay close attention to the order in which we present these sentences. Remember that each sentence can only function as one of these four types. So a sentence, if it's a main idea, that's all it's going to do. That's going to it's going to present the main idea. We can't have one sentence that involves the main idea and evidence. We can't do that. We shouldn't also have one sentence that includes both evidence and an analysis. Okay, so we don't want to do that. We also don't want to have one sentence that might include the analysis and the linking or summarizing sentence. We don't want to do that. So again, each sentence should function as one of these four types of, um, of ideas, right? Of, they should function as one of these examples that, we've, that we're uh, looking at here today. So let's look at, again, the organization. And, and maybe if, if you've already started your paragraph, take a look at what you've developed so far. How are you organizing each of these sentences, right? The first step, of course, is to identify each sentence by its type. Is it functioning as the main idea? Is it functioning as an evidence? Is it functioning as an analysis? Or is it functioning as a summarizing sentence? And then look at the order in which you're presenting these sentences throughout your body paragraph. Now, yesterday we looked at two examples that are probably the most common ways that you can organize your sentences within a body paragraph. We looked at, again, here we have some initials to represent each of the sentences. In this example, we're going to assume a paragraph with six sentences. The first sentence function as the main idea. The second sentence functions as evidence. The third sentence as evidence. The fourth and fifth sentences as an analysis sentences. And then a final sentence, the sixth sentence, functioning as the summarizing sentence. So this is one common way to do it. You can lump all the evidence together right after the main idea, talk about that, including the, uh, the, the citations that are going to be required, talking about statistics and, and examples and details about what it is you're discussing. 
talking about how or why or when or where or with whom. And then you can introduce your analysis or your explanation or you commenting on the evidence and how the evidence links back to the main idea. Remember, that's the job of the analysis sentence is to connect, make that connection between the main idea and your evidence. And then you want to conclude with a summarizing sentence. So this is one very typical way that you can organize your ideas. But it's not the only way. You can also include a little bit of evidence and analysis, a little bit more evidence with more analysis, and you can divide up your sentences in that way. And that's the second example as shown here. We have the main idea first, of course, and then we have evidence, analyze, evidence, analyze, and then we have the summarizing sentence at the end. So this is another way. Now, which way is the best? Well, it depends. It's not like, oh, I think I like the first one the best. I'm always going to write my paragraphs like that. We have to look very closely at the main idea. What is it that we're trying to say? Who's our audience? And what's the easiest way, the best way that I, the writer, can be understood? And if you ask yourself that question, it's going to help you determine which way that you should present these sentences. Because that's really the underlying question. How can you be best understood? What's the easiest way for someone to read your, your paragraph and for them to understand what it is that you're talking about? So always ask yourself, each time you, ask, you write out a, a body paragraph, which way should I present my, my sentences? Now, examples three and four and five and six relate to some some ways that I would avoid organizing your sentences when writing a, a body paragraph. Examples three and basically example three deals with uh, the idea that we have analysis first. So we have main idea, analyze evidence, analyze evidence. And we talked about this yesterday. This is not ideal because we always want to present the evidence first. All right, we want to show the facts, the examples first, and then we want to comment on the evidence. If we start analyzing something before we present the evidence, then it gets a little bit confusing. It's like, well, what are you talking about? We don't even have the evidence yet. You're trying to connect evidence to the main idea, but I haven't even seen the evidence as the reader. So present the evidence first and then analyze. And that's why example number three is not recommended. Again, because evidence should, be co should come before the analysis sentences. Examples four and five really talk about the, the balance, the careful balance that we should have between evidence type sentences and analysis type sentences. We want to maintain a balance. We don't want to have too much evidence and not enough analysis, which is the case in example number four, nor do we want too much analysis with just a little bit of evidence, which is shown in example five. Now, we don't always need to have exactly the same number of sentences between evidence and analysis, okay? So you can have a little bit more analysis. You can have a little bit of more evidence if, if it's needed, right? But you don't want to go overboard. You don't want to have too much. You don't want to have too much of one without the other. All right. And example six is that's the point in example number six is to say, OK, you don't need exactly the same number of sentences. This is perfectly acceptable. Having a paragraph with a main idea, two sentences with evidence, one sentence with analysis and a summarizing sentence. Right. In theory, that's that's OK. All of this, of course, is going to depend on the sentence itself, right? And if I am looking at your sentences and I feel like maybe a couple of analysis sentences aren't really getting to the point that they're not actually talking about the evidence, right, then I may make a comment. I may say, well, either this is off point or maybe you need an additional analysis to make that better connection between the main idea and the evidence. But that will depend on you know, I, that'll be, depend on the actual sentence after seeing your examples. 
Now, the final thing I'll say here is all of this discussion about the meal plan, all right, this has, uh, this uh, does not, this is not the same thing as determining the best organizational pattern for your paragraph. Remember the organizational patterns. We can organize chronologically. We can organize the least important to the most important. We can organize um, by spatial or categorical um, ways or means based on category, right? We can also organize uh, through maybe a chain relationship like this causes this and then this causes this and that there's a, a link between a cause and effect relationship or a problem and a solution, right? So you still need to decide on a proper way to organize your ideas, but also look at each sentence as functioning in different ways and that you'll have to also look at how you want to organize those sentences as well, you know, and as in terms of how they function. So I wanted to review again what we talked about yesterday. Maybe this is a, a new concept, um, but I think it's a very, very important that you have uh, a level of understanding about both organizational patterns and also how sentences function within a body paragraph. Because again, this is going to apply not only to this class, but any class that you're asked to write an academic essay. Are there any questions about uh, what we're talking about here today and uh, today's activity, which again is to continue developing your body paragraph? Any questions? All right, today I'd like for us to continue working in your wiki. And again, our objective here is to try to complete the paragraph that we started yesterday. And I would write your paragraph underneath. I'll go ahead and show you in my wiki here. I would create, if you haven't already, another heading at the bottom. Well, here, I'll just do this under evidence. Under your evidence, I would create a heading called paragraph. And just below your heading, then you can begin writing your paragraph. I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic, guys. If you guys have any questions, you want me to look at something, uh, let me know. Unmute your microphone. Meanwhile, I'll be looking through some of the, wi the wikis and some of your progress, and I'll be making comments as, as needed. Ben, can you check my paragraph? Yes, uh, Wendy, I'll check it right now. All right, uh, Wendy, I'm going to maybe, I don't know if you can see my screen, and I'm going to try to leave comments as well in the comments section so you can refer to these, uh, if you can refer back to these as needed. Um, a couple of things here. Um, so I'm looking first at your topic sentence. The English educational, the the English education in music in Mexico has been improving exponentially due to a wide variety of educational programs. All right. Um, I'm wondering if how this sentence would read if you started due to the variety. If you if you turn this around, and you started with the educational program, starting with something like educational programs, or the Mexican government has implemented educational programs that have improved the level of English. You see what I mean? Like just turn it around. 
And yeah, I think it might have a bigger impact on what you're saying. And there's nothing wrong grammatically with what you have, but I'm I'm thinking about which way would have the biggest impact in presenting the main idea of your paragraph. And so this is one thing that came to mind is perhaps reversing the order. And there's something about separating Mexico the way you have it and then government at the end. I mean, it's it's clear, but I think it would be clear if you brought those together. The Mexican government, right? You just bring it together. And, and perhaps if you move that to the subject, just try it, experiment with it and see what you think. Okay. Now, the... The use of certainty, or certainly, certainly and undoubtedly, this also falls under the category, there are other words also, like clearly, right? Obviously, I would suggest this now speaks to tone, like the tone that you're using when writing. And I want you to be assertive in your writing, but I don't want you to sound, um, what's, I don't know the, the best way to say this, you don't want to, sound too much you don't want to say like well obviously and you're not saying obviously but it's kind of like this if i say something like obviously comma blah 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 if it's not obvious for the reader then they're gonna they're gonna feel like an idiot or they may say well i i disagree like it's if you say well this is obvious to you but i don't think it's obvious based on what you're saying so what you want to do is you want to sound assertive. You want to have, you want to build a strong argument. You want all of this good information in there, but without, without saying words like, like, Hey, you know, this is so obvious. I shouldn't even have to say it, you know, type of thing. It's kind of like that. And so you actually sound more, if you focus more on what you say and not how you say it in terms of these these, these connectors, like undoubtedly, well, well, maybe I'm in doubt. If I'm reading, your job as the writer is to clarify those doubts. It's not just to tell me, well, this is undoubtedly true. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, and it's an easy change. Maybe, you know, try another connector. Or in this case, because you're introducing your first piece of evidence, which is good, maybe you don't even need... A connector okay a lot of times you'll need connectors when you're connecting two or more pieces of evidence whether those evidence are similar or maybe they're contrasting okay so certainly you would need some sort of transition there but i don't think you need one to introduce your first piece of evidence you could just be, be, begin many local programs and you're off to the races okay um now in your evidence so evidence in our, I noticed that you use the word exponentially a couple of times here, and I'm assuming that you're paraphrasing your evidence and you're choosing the words that you want to use. I would, you know, use, sometimes we use exponentially. I mean, exponentially has an official definition, but a lot of times people use the word just simply to mean a lot. And so I would generally avoid the term exponentially for that reason, unless you're really using it to be very exact on its meaning. If you're simply just meaning a lot, yeah, I would probably probably choose another way of saying it. Now, you have this ev piece of evidence in two parts. You have this, so as a result, this. Um, as a result, the number of English has increased. All right. Um, uh, I'm wondering if you can offer and use the same source, but say something a little bit more specific, some aspect or characteristic, or maybe an additional detail about this national program that would help shed light that this causes English learners to increase now increase the number of english learners and notice here what what's the cause and effect exactly here so 
the number, you're just saying that there are more English learners? Or can you say something about the quality of the learning that's going on? All right, so there's two things here that I want you to think about. The first part is if there's any additional details about the program. For example, well, when do they start? How long has it been in effect? I don't know if you mentioned that. Okay, you say it was implemented in 2009. All right, now does this apply maybe at what levels or what levels do they offer? Does this start in primary, elementary, high school? Um, anything else that you can include into this detail to provide maybe a little bit more um, you know, detail? Think about the question words, right? How, what, where, why, when? And and then, as a result, then think about mm, if there's anything else here. And you could also use the same, you could change the order here as well. You could say the number of English language learners has increased due to the, because of the, this program that was implemented in 2009 and covers this these grade levels do you see what i mean yeah i see i see i i think the in the evidence it it would make i think it would have a bigger impact if you changed the order as well if you started with english language learners have increased you know all right and next sentence by having the opportunity to assess this type of educational program Students are given all the necessary tools. By having the opportunity to, to access this type of educational program, all right? All right, they're given the necessary tools. All right, maybe you mentioned specific tools in your evidence, like which tools exactly? You know, if, if, if you're mentioning certain tools that are coming from this national program, maybe you can show some examples in the evidence as well, um, you know, to clarify exactly what you mean by the tools. And then undoubtedly, I would remove that. English is one of... Now, here, this is where you could offer a transition because this is now your second piece of evidence. So... Think about how you can, after you've changed your evidence, your first piece of evidence, think about how you can offer a transition from what you mentioned before, your first piece of evidence, with what you have here in your second piece of evidence. Remember that a transition, it can be a sentence connector, of course, but it could also be an introductory phrase, like you've done a prepositional phrase, right? Um, but I, this is where I would definitely offer a transition to introduce now your second piece of evidence. English is one of the most important tools. Try to avoid, there's certain words and phrases I ask learners to try to avoid, not because it, you can't, there's, it's not like a, against the law to use these tools, these, these words, but it forces you to write more descriptively. And so instead of using the word important, think about how you can present and show the importance of what you're saying. Again, you don't want to tell the reader that it's important. They should come and realize that this is important by the words, by the ways that you are, that you're presenting. So I would kind of revisit this evidence here, and it shows learners can improve. So English is one of the learning skills. It shows to improve through their studies since school is in language of business in Mexico. All right, so now you're introducing the, the this idea of business. So if business is also part of your the big idea here uh, in in this paragraph, then you might also want to relook revisit your topic sentence and see if 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 all of this is leading to business. Be, um, then think about that. Um, since you mentioned the the language of business in Mexico. As the business keeps sector, okay, so notice how you're building up to business, which is fine, 
but you don't, I don't think you mentioned that, or it, it's not really clear in the topic sentence that you're really leading up to business, if that makes sense. All in all, um, yeah, I think I would choose a different connector. All in all is a little informal and it's a little less used in written text, a little more used in conversation. So I, because this is a short paragraph and I, I'm usually, uh, I, to, to, to finish a paragraph, I think I would think about a complex sentence where you have a subordinating clause coming first and try to avoid the typical connectors like to conclude, in conclusion, right? Uh, and I would categorize all in all under the same category. Since Mexican students are being given the opportunity to do they have. Yeah. So, yeah, you've got a good uh, final sentence here. I would just work on a different type of uh, connector there. But do you see what I mean by this idea of business and maybe bringing that into the main idea of your, your body paragraph? Yeah, I just realized that. And if you, and I don't know if you have this information available to you, if you can present numbers to say, okay, in 2000, there were X amount of learners now, or, you know, from 2009, there were X amount of learners, and now there, there are more, then you've really got a good evidence sentence because now you're showing the progress. Remember, the, the objective of this paragraph is to reveal the progress. And any numbers, you know, numbers are a really good way to show progress. So if your whole thing is about showing numbers and, and how many learners there have been versus how many there are now, if you can provide that information, maybe even go into the Inehi website. I know that I mentioned that we want to try to focus on websites that are in uh, English, and I want you to focus on websites that are in English. I think maybe one exception might be Inehi if you're just trying to get numbers, right? If you're just getting statistics, but you might also look into that if you have that information available. All right. Okay, Ben. Thank you so okay. much. You're welcome. You have a good start there, Wendy. Anybody else want me to look at anything? Let me know. I'll go ahead and mute my mic. Let me know if you want uh, you want me to review something or if you have questions about APA. Ben, I have a question. If if I want to use the word green to refer to a, a sustainable project, is it okay using the word green or, or do I have to use sustainable or, or a more technical word? Uh, I, I'm sorry, Oscar. I didn't, I understood your question, but I didn't get the word that you were asking specifically about. If you want to type it into the chat, uh, it oh, might so help. It was green, like the color, green. Green? Uh -huh. like green lemon. Okay, but what do you, ref you're asking if you can use green? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I follow the question. Oh, okay, uh, uh, I'm wondering if, if I'm able to, to say, uh, for example, uh, being awarded by a global organization is proven to be a good incentive for architects in order to develop green projects. Is it okay using green? All right. I think what I would do, uh, I mean, I understand what you mean, green projects. I think what I would do, though, for me, that's categorized kind of like a colloquialism. It's like, it's not slang necessarily, but it's, it, it it's not a literal meaning. And so I'm going to encourage all of you to write as literal as possible to avoid slang and idiomatic expressions and colloquialisms. So in this case, maybe write out what 
a green project, for example, is. A, and, and you might have to say something like a project that, <clears throat> and you could use a relative clause, that, and then you go on to explain in detail what is meant by, for example, a green project. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, I was afraid that I, that would be uh, like like a slang or something. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's it's one of those things where, yeah, if you're familiar with the culture or the the language, remember, language and culture go so much together. So that's the problem with using idiomatic expressions or colloquialisms or, or slang is that if you're not really familiar with the culture, right, you're going to really have a hard time being understood. And your job as the writer for this purpose is to write as literal as possible so that basically anyone who uh, understands English can understand what you're saying. And even though they may be from another culture and may not be familiar with local ways of expressing oneself so but yeah that's what that's how i would handle that term okay then thank you you're welcome all right guys i think we'll stop there for today um, any questions about what we talked about in terms of developing a body paragraph? Okay, if there are no more questions, we'll stop there for today, guys. Tomorrow, try to have completed your paragraph. We'll have one more day tomorrow to work through and uh, receive feedback and make changes to your paragraph so that you have the best version available um, for Friday's reading of your paragraph. Again, on Friday, we're going to read our paragraphs during our live session. So we want to make final changes by tomorrow so that we're prepared to do the reading on Friday. All right, guys, thanks a lot and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Ben. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Ben.